All right, so the last video lesson uh, is about the Lorenz curve and the Gini index, which are measures of inequality. So this is an important one to cover because this is a really significant social issue that we're dealing with today. Uh, I believe the number is the wealthiest 5%, uh, I think the wealthiest 10% of Americans uh, have like 80% of all of the wealth. I'll have to check my Bernie Sanders numbers on that. But the, the point is you get your Jeff Bezos's and Elon Musk's and Bill Gates. If you combine the wealthiest 100 people, that essentially is more money than the poorest half of the U.S. population, which would be about 165 million of the poorest people. Just take the 100 wealthiest people. I'm just outside of that. I'm like at 107. I deliberately try to keep myself out of that top 100 so that people don't like protest outside my house. I'm getting a new bike and I'm expecting a lot of protests, like rubbing it into people's faces how much money I make. So anyway, this is an important social justice issue. And we have this Lorenz curve, which has the hardest thing about this graph is knowing what's on the axis. This is the percent of all income on the vertical, okay? And then we have what's called quintiles on the horizontal. We're breaking it into fifths, the poorest, next poorest, the middle, the second wealthiest, and then the richest are the last group. And what we do is we take a look at how much of the income each group gets out of the you know, total income of, of the United States or whatever country it is. All right, I'll get back to Gini coefficient at the end because uh, it's easier to understand once we put this curve up. So first of all, we have this line of equality which is if every one of these groups made the same amount of money, that the poorest 20% would get 20% of the income. If we added then the next 20% to that, the 40% would make 40% of the income. Then if we added the next group onto that, the 60% would get 60% of the income, et cetera. So in other words, this would represent if every group made the same amount of money. Homeless person, to Jeff Bezos, everybody gets the same amount of money. So it's a mythical line, but it's something to compare uh, to. All right, so the poorest group gets about 3% of the income, and I'm gonna put a little three here to represent that's the percent of all income that the poorest group gets, all right? So we'll just draw a little line. This is the beginning of our Lorenz curve we're at 3% of all income. The next group or next poorest gets about 8%. I'm just gonna put a little eight there, which takes the total to 11, all right? Which I'm gonna put right about here. I'm gonna draw the line now. All right, so we're at a total of 11. So I'm at three here, this is at 11, the three plus the eight, okay? Uh, the next group, gets about 14, okay? 14% 14 of all income. Now, this is a good gauge of, are we an equal society? Because the middle class should be around 20%, right? There should be, you know, some balance there because this is the middle, that one's the one that should be 20%, that's well below 20%. That takes us to a total of 25% of the income. So note, we're at 60% of the population only has about one quarter of all of the income. All right? So obviously, you know, inequality in society is a big issue, and this is taking a look at the math of it. And then the last group, or the, I'm sorry, the second to last group is about 25%, which takes us to 50, which means what? Well, the last, the wealthiest group gets uh, 
the last 50% of all income. Okay, and it's actually a little bit more than that. All right, but it works out as a nice round number. And this is our Lorenz curve. Okay, and you know, America, as far as inequality, falls somewhere in the middle. Okay, uh, but we have what looks like a banana, which is going to be important. Okay, and I have and then this here, if we draw a line down here, this is going to form a right triangle. Okay, the line of equality with this forms a right triangle. And that is how we get the Gini coefficient. That's how it's calculated. Uh, the banana over the right triangle. Now, I'm sure other people are, you know, it looks like a banana over a right triangle. Okay, it's not this region over this region. It's this region here, okay, over all of this, okay. So if you called it this A region and this B, this is how AP calls it. So Ginny is A divided by A plus B, okay. Banana over right triangle is easier for me, okay. The lower the Gini coefficient, okay, the more equal society is, okay? So Norway uh, has a Gini coefficient of 0.27, which then gets changed to just 27 because economists can't handle decimal points, apparently. That's a really good one. And the Scandinavian countries, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, all have like around 30. The U.S. is around 41 right now. South Africa is terrible at 63. Okay. So the lower the number, but you need to know the lower the number, the more equal society is. Okay. And again, the USA falls somewhere in the middle at 41. All right. So obviously, we have a problem in society, we want to solve that problem. Let's take this out here. And we want to bring in this curve to make things more equal. And how do we do that? Okay. That didn't come in too clearly, but you get the idea. We want to bring in the Lorenz curve. All right, well, we have things called automatic stabilizers. There are two automatic stabilizers. The first one is the progressive tax system. Well, why doesn't the U.S. use a progressive tax system if it's going to help things? Oh, that's right, we do. Okay, so the progressive tax is the wealthier pay a higher percentage of their tax than poor people do. Okay, so the more money you make, the more, you know, you pay 30, sometimes 40% of your income in taxes. Okay, this doesn't include Social Security or state income taxes, federal income tax. All right, and then the poor, if you don't make any money, you don't pay any income tax. Okay, and this number shifts a little bit, but about 30 to 40% of the United States households do not pay any income tax because they are in need or are poor. So we are doing something. And this is called an automatic stabilizer because if you make more money, it automatically kicks in. You don't need any legislation or voting. So the stimulus package that the government's trying to pass now isn't automatic. It's got to be voted on. The progressive tax system, you make more money, you pay more taxes. You make less money, you pay less tax. And that wealth is supposed to be redistributed, bringing in the Lorenz curve and making things more equal. And then the second automatic stabilizer is unemployment compensation. All right, so if I get fired, okay, ignore like what the reason is or whatever. Um, I made a comment that the Lorenz curve, I'm not gonna cover it this year. And then they're like, you're fired. Okay, well, I can file for unemployment compensation, which will give me some percentage of uh, 
my income for a period of six months usually. Now note, if I just walk out of my job and quit, I cannot receive unemployment. Okay, so watch the episode of The Office where they merge the companies and then the one guy says he quits and then Michael Scott says, you can't quit because I'm firing you. And then Jan gets all mad because she's like, now we've got to pay him unemployment. What did you do? Okay, so these are the two automatic stabilizers. Uh, just quick notes. Uh, there's... At 10 minutes all right that can't be possible well, i guess it's all right uh there's proportional tax which is what the state of illinois has pritzker wanted to change that to a progressive tax uh and then there's regressive taxes regressive taxes are essentially things that are taxed that poor people tend to buy so on alcohol tobacco cigarettes lottery tickets are frequently they're not a tax, but they have the same effect. Poor people tend to buy lottery tickets. It's a terrible economic decision. You know, regressive tax is just bad for society. And sadly, the government does do things that are bad for society. Lottery tickets, you know, not good. Bad odds, okay? You ever hear the saying, you gotta be in it to win it? Well, I say, you gotta stay out of it to keep your dollar, okay? All right, uh, I'm at 12 minutes, so well past my, you know, eight minute limit, so. All right, good luck on the quiz on Wednesday, Thursday.